as you can see I got everything in the chassis but have to make a couple corrections before we move forward hey what's happening guys we're moving along with our amplifier build you can see all the parts are in the chassis but a couple of corrections I had to make on the last one we had to redo those tube sockets and on this one this yellow wire which is one of the two output wires for the signal I soldered into W1 it should actually be up here into W11 so before we move forward that's where we have to go so our first thing is to get this wire out of here we shouldn't be too hard we just need to heat it up there we go wires out now we do we do have to clean out that joint that solder pad and for that I'm going to use some solder wick there we go clean as whistle so that goes to W11 right here so we can make that work not a big deal these holes are plated through so soldering from the top or the bottom side really shouldn't matter although I would prefer to solder from the bottom sometimes you just have to do what you can make sure we got a good joint there good okay so then we're gonna move on got lots and lots of wires to deal with here let me zoom out and try and get them out of the way as best I can so we have our audio output transformer here and our power transformer wires over here so the first thing we're going to do is to hook up the AC input to the fuse holder and we're going to do that with the hot wire to the fuse holder alright so the first step is we're going to cut the wire so we have the minimal <clears throat> amount of wire that we need but an important safety consideration when using these types of fuse holders is you want your live coming from your main supply to go to the center pin not the sleeve and the reason for that is when you pull this out you could accidentally touch this which is the sleeve connector which would be connected to the live so you don't want that to happen as long as this is connected to the center pin as soon as you loosen that you have disconnected it and there shouldn't be any chance of your getting shocked Alright, so we'll tin. We'll put that through the old loop there. And we'll solder her up. This is a large connector, so it's going to take a bit of time to heat her all up there. So I'm going to hold it in place. 
give it a few seconds. And we're good. Okay, next up, we're going to solder the other side of the fuse holder to the wire that will then carry our hot to the circuit board. Once again, I want to make sure I use plenty of solder and then hold that into place for a few seconds while it cools. And it is going to go right there into W1. And that's where we removed that yellow wire that I had mistakenly soldered in there originally. Put that in there. When you're dealing with mains voltage, you really want to be as careful as you can be and double check everything. So there we have a pretty good joint now. Next up is our white or our neutral from the AC and it goes here to W4. Again I'm going to trim it just a little bit. So we don't have any extra wires flopping around in the breeze. Then we'll tin that. Then we'll burn our finger. And then it goes there. Which it doesn't want to fit. All right, one second. There we go. A little finagling. We got her in there pretty good. Make sure that stays in place. Next, we're going to deal with probably the most important connection which is the ground and it is going to connect to the chassis so let me get set up for that okay so there is our chassis grounding point I'm actually going to come up through the bottom on this one just so I have an easier time soldering it all together. Now this might take a minute because we've now got the entire chassis acting as a heat sink. I think we got it. I'm going to take a closer look here just to be certain yeah yeah I soldered in there nice okay so I have to attach another one of those little points right there right there and that will be for all the other grounds so I'll be right back alright let's take care of the LED indicator Again, I'm just trimming these wires short so that we don't have extra bundles of wire around, which is never a good idea because lengths of unused wire 
get converted into antennas very easily. Give our iron a quick clean. We'll tin these up. And they go. I don't know if you can even see that. Right down in there where it says light. It doesn't no, doesn't really matter which hole they go in. Come on, baby. There we go. And we're in the hole. However, we have a careless whisker, which I will take care of momentarily. As soon as I get the other wire in. Using much more care this time, <laughs> I will hold that in place. There we go. Careless whiskers. Kind of still there, but it's not in the way anymore. So now we can move on. Where shall we go next? Okay. The black and brown wires from the output, your power transformer, go to W2 on the circuit board. I'm just going to trim these up here. I'm going to strip them and tin them. Okay, so black and brown to W2. This is going to be exciting. Again, hold that there. Same thing with the black wire. So these must be the input side, the primary side, because they are coming from one side of the switch. And then, let me zoom out. So here we have the switch, switch lead going into there and going to the power transformer. Now it says black, white, and brown, white go to W3. So, if I can find my wire cutters, we will repeat that process. So, if you guys who are watching this are in Italy, 
man, my hearts go out to you. My heart goes out to you. The death toll is just staggering. So far, where I'm at, which is, I would call it a pretty rural area, I'm about an hour west of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, two hours south of Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, about three hours east of Columbus, Ohio. So those are the major metro areas around me. Where I live is a town of somewhere around 5,000 people. I haven't heard any reports of the virus making it into my county, which is called Jefferson. But it is in the surrounding county, so chances are it's here. And nobody's just been tested for it yet. But yeah, guys, do everything you can to stay safe. Green and yellow goes to W7. No things aren't good in the rest of Europe either, but man, Italy just really hit hard. Of course, one of my nieces, who is a sophomore in college, just came back from partying in Miami for spring break. Now, she's a kid, so, you know, can't really hold those decisions against her, but my sister, on the other hand, is a nurse practitioner with a PhD. She is a doctor. She, of all people, should have known better. So, with my health problems and my mother's health problems, I don't live with my mother, but I take care of her. I have banned my sister's family from visiting until further notice. Just gotta, I mean, I know it seems draconian, but we gotta do what we gotta do to keep the people we love safe. Next up is the red and yellow, which goes to W5. My son doesn't know it yet, but uh, this is going to be one of his birthday presents. His birthday is next Sunday. He's turning 16 and was planning on taking his driver's test on March the 31st, but that has been postponed until further notice by order of the governor of Ohio. He's closed all of the DMVs, which are the D Department of Motor Vehicles, and all of the state driver's testing stations, which are run by the Ohio State Patrol. Unfortunately, we don't know when that's going to happen again. And then, he was supposed to go see Britt Floyd in Pittsburgh last night, but uh, that ain't happening either. Okay. The red wire. These two go to B+, which is right here. Like I said, while I feel terrible that he's missing out on these things, I would feel even more terrible were he to come down with this disease. So we have to do everything we can. I know, I'm repeating myself. I'm rambling. Let's talk about something else. Uh, we've we've come to the point of the soldering where we must be inventive so as to not screw anything up.
So if you are an American football fan, particularly a fan of the legendary and historic Pittsburgh Steelers, you know that our intrepid quarterback, Big Ben Roethlisberger, who spent all of last year on injured reserve after screwing up his shoulder, is back to throwing the football and says that he's throwing pain-free for the first time in years. Good for you, Ben. And the evil, vile Tom Brady has left the Patriots and is now a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Good for you, Tommy. Enjoy your time in Florida. All right, next we have our two filament wires, which I'm going to twist. Let me get a drill. Okay. So we're going to twist these up. I don't know if it's particularly necessary, but this is the way the, the old timers did it. And supposedly twisting these cancels out any common mode noise. Now I'm going to support the wires at the base. Hopefully, that should be enough twist. And I'm going to route them down, around, under, and through. And then we'll cut them. Strip them. And we'll solder them in. So I was going to order an infrared non-contact thermometer for my projects, thinking, well, surely, you know, all of the medical infrared thermometers are gone, but I can probably still get, you know, an industrial scientific one. Nope, they're gone too. You know, unless I want to pay $500 for a fluke one, which I don't. Like I said, it's just for projects, so. I ordered one from the usual suspects far across the sea and hopefully in a month we'll have one so if you're not familiar with tubes the filaments are the heaters that heat up the cathode to excite the electrons and that is everything from the power transformer. That leaves us now with our output transformer. Okay, one last joint for today, and I think we'll call it quits. We got this grounding point here from W6 on the circuit board. And it goes to our other main ground here. I'm going to give a little pinch job on this one. Kind of hold it in place while I solder it. So this video is getting pretty long. 
I think we will end it here for this part. All we have left to do is the output transformer and we test it. So, what we've done today, we have our AC power coming in, there's our hot, the black, which goes to the center tab of the fuse, out of the center tab, into this input here, through, through the switch, into the power transformer, out of the power transformer, through our rectifier, and into the board. So that was today's work. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to everybody who's wished me well during this. I wish you well as well. Together we can get through this. That's it. I'm out. Peace. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. A dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.